All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Borderlands 2 two player co op any percent. My name is Deceptics. I'm joined by my wonderful co op partner, Unjust Action. Hello, everyone. And I'm also joined by some wonderful people on the couch. If you want to introduce MCC yourselves. Rules 21. I run the 100% version of this category with these guys. Uh, my name is Utsu. Uh, I used to be a runner for this game. And a few years ago, I actually had world record in this category with my co op partner, Tokigi. Uh, big thank you for that. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, so before we get in game, just a couple things. We are playing on patch 1.1.0, which contains all of the glitches, tricks, and just the stuff we'll use throughout the run, which we'll, of course, talk about when we get there. Uh, and then we are on, or the characters we are playing are very important. I'm the off host player playing as Axton, and Unjust is the host player playing as the character Gage. And our character selection and who's playing what is very important because of certain glitches that, of course, we will talk about when we get there. But with those things out of the way, Unjust, you can get us in game and talk about a couple more things. All right, yeah, so this game starts with like a 50 second initial on cutscene, um, and after which we'll gain control of our characters, and that's when time will start. Um, a couple things to note is that we start with a few guns in our backpack, and the guns are consistent, but the parts on them aren't. And so um, as a community, we kind of just decided you could use a pre-made save file to start with the perfect guns because resetting for good enough guns to do the run with would be really annoying. And the variation between getting good parts versus bad parts is quite significant, so we just decided, yeah, use a save file. Enough RNG in this game already. So there's a little bit of uh, cutscene, just listen to Claptrap. That's how all of the early game is going to be. Just wait for Claptrap. So once we finish that, we'll be able to... Able to Start timer once they gain control of their characters. Yeah, so I will count in quite soon. All right, three, two, one, and go. So, once again, welcome to Borderlands 2, the game known for having millions of guns. So, how about, how about I make a couple? Let's, uh, oh, I have DLC. This is fine. <laughs> All right, so how about I make a couple? <laughs> so this is a trick called duping. Um, we'll get into some of the more intricate de details later, but right now, just keep in mind that if I can put a gun in my hands, I can make as many copies of the gun that I want. So I dropped my sniper there. My sniper is better for shooting just because it has higher fire rate. So the sub's going to make multiple copies for us that we'll use to do our damage throughout the run. And then here we're going to set up something called a dual dupe. Uh, basically, Decept starts with an audio log in his backpack we can play at any point. He's going to put that up for trade, and then we're going to duel for it. And then during the duel, Decept will play the audio log to skip a line of dialogue, and then he's going to intentionally lose the duel. And since he loses it, I'll win. It, the echo will get put into my backpack, and then it'll, in effect, Duplicate it so we can use it later for more dialogue skips. And then the SEP is going to hit the save station on the other side of this wall. Um, there's a cutscene and then some dialogue and animations after the cutscene that they're just going to save quit and skip them. And then they're just going to spawn on the other side of the wall because they hit the save station early. So the SEP will turn in and then I'll save quit. And this will put us just past the door we just uh, had, we would otherwise have to wait for. So a lot of this early game is kind of just escorting Claptrap here and defending him from the enemies that will spawn in a little bit. Um, there's a lot of babysitting in the early game. Oh, I have tutorial messages on. Hold on. Uh, so there's a lot of babysitting Claptrap in the start of the game. So it's going to be kind of touch and go for a little bit. But um, It's a lot of escort Claptrap, do a thing, escort Claptrap, do a thing. So they try to speed that up as best as they can. A couple things I'll be doing in the early game is uh, one thing called double shotting, where basically if you shoot, you can reload, and then during the reload animation, you can shoot and melee at the same time uh, to achieve what we call a double shot. So it's just like a way of getting around the fire rate cap. It's only really useful on bolt action guns. Um, so for the sniper rifle we have here, it's very useful. Uh, something else I'll be doing is dropper loading. Basically, whenever a gun is on the ground in world, it has a full magazine. So instead of you know, having to reload, I can just drop my gun and pick it back up and that'll reload it. So Unjust is doing a little bit of the, the, 
the escorting right now, Decept, is now duping a lot of guns. Um, one of the side effects that we mentioned earlier is that you can uh, duplicate and stack implicit weapon stats onto your character. So these snipers have an extra 160% extra critical hit damage that every time Deceptic stoops those snipers, he is adding that onto his character. So in this upcoming fight, pay attention to his critical hit numbers and compare them to unjust critical hit numbers. You're going to see they're going to be comparable, even though the weapon that Decept is using is much, much weaker. So that's 181 crit damage on a weapon that does 11 damage. Um, this is going to happen throughout the entirety of the run. Um, this is one of the things that makes co-op runs co-op. So uh, throughout the entirety of the game, this app is just going to be duping weapons over and over and over again, and his crit numbers are going to be very, very high. <laughs> so they're going to set up another dual dupe here um, to skip some more dialogue. Some dialogue you can interrupt with an echologue. Other dialogue lines like this one, you have to play an echologue before the dialogue line and then play one to interrupt it, and then it'll skip the dialogue there. So it'll cut, start the cutscene immediately, and it'll duplicate the echologues to use later. So this is the first boss of the game. It is a tutorial boss, but it is still a boss. And with all that crit damage that Decept has been stacking, um, He's the gone. boss is dead. Boss fight. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to pick up Claptrap's eye and save quit. And then I'll load back in and save quit again. Um, what this does is like it pushes Claptrap up the hill at the end of the map, where typically you have about a minute of waiting around for dialogue and whatnot. Um, doing the save quit means all you have to do is run back through the map, and that takes about 45 seconds, so it takes about 15 seconds total. Yeah, and while Unjust runs towards the end of the map, I'm going to be joining as new characters to drop their echoes on the floor for more dialogue skips later. Now, one more thing about the duping trick is that it works by swapping and dropping really fast. So the way we do this is we bind swap and drop to opposite directions on the scroll wheel. And then, of course, using two mice, we scroll one one direction and one the other direction. Uh, I do this a little differently. So instead of having both mice on the desk, uh, I have my second mouse on the floor, and I operate it with my foot. <laughs> I am more limbs, more optimal. Uh, I'm stuck in this menu. Should I do this? <laughs> All right. So the, the reason that they're able to spawn in and get these new characters is because the rules say you can only, everyone has to be in the game for all objective triggers, that while Unjust is running back and forth, there are no objectives that are upgrade, updating. So they're able to just save quit while, while Unjust is running. Um, so Unjust waited there for Decept to be in the game so that picking up the item uh, updated the trigger that Decept was in for. So he just has to run back and get the echologues that he dropped. So Unjust is just waiting for him to, to get there before he travels. Time for a quick donation. Yeah, one quick yeah, go donation. Ahead. We have ten dollars from Bound that says Deceptics unjust action at GDQ. That is awesome. Make sure Roland doesn't forget his shields. Good luck, gamers. Woo! All right, so now we're in another section of we're gonna do away fight, save quit, skip animations, do away fight, save quit, skip animations. Um, they are killing enemies a little early. Um, right now, the the trigger isn't active for they killed the, the wave fight, but they're killing enemies early because they need a little bit of XP. Um, the XP route is very tight in the early game that they need to hit specific levels at specific times. So they're going to kill some enemies that you might not need to kill just so that they can get a little bit of extra XP. So kill the wave fight, save quit, skip the animations. And then one more wave fight after this. This one's actually a really coordinated wave fight. Um, the sep is going to stay back and snipe from a distance. But there are a couple enemies that he's not going to be able to reach just because they spawn in a really awkward spot. So Unjust loads into the game immediately, so he's going to immediately start running into the town so that he gets a good angle on the, the enemies that he can't, Decept can't hit from distance. The buildings exist, I swear. <laughs> and then save quit, and then they're going to run back. More animation, so time for another quick donation. Great. Sounds good. Well, we have $100 from Dr. Midai that says, I love the Borderlands series. This will be the first speedrun of this game I've ever seen. I'm currently playing through the series with my buddy. Told him about this run today, so hopefully he checks it out. And this gets him into watch more GDQ and speedruns. Uh, I think one quick one, too. 
Sure, we have $50 from Sir Sputnik that says, so excited for Borderlands 2. Remember to follow the soothing sound of Claptrap's voice, and I'm sure you'll be fine. Good luck on Justin Deceptics. All right, so Decept's going to get back in the game soon. Soon, <laughs> hopefully. Um, and then they would typically save quit this here, um, but there's a global timer running in the background that if they save quit here, the timer's not going to cycle over at the right time that they need it to. So instead of save quitting, they're going to travel out and back in, which is going to give the same effect of a save quit, um, but still keep that timer running in the background so that it cycles at the right time. Right, so they're going to nope. travel out right now. So yeah, we lose like five seconds right now just to having to redo this travel back into the area, but it saves us lots of time later. And so, so here's when the, uh, the co-op part of the run really starts to shine. We're going to be splitting up for the first real time. Um, the first little bit is going to be me kind of just do, getting some XP, doing a bit of side missions. Um, and this step's going to be babysitting Claptrap for the next little bit. And then in a couple minutes, we'll kind of swap roles, and I'll be escorting Claptrap. So I think while they're setting this up, time for another quick donation. Yeah, sure. Sounds good. Well, we have $100 from Sleepy Time 3578 that says, so excited to see Deceptics and Unjust Action at GDQ supporting Prevent Cancer Foundation. So this isn't any present run, so typically we're only going to be doing the main quests. There are a handful of side quests, though, that we're going to end up doing that Unjust is doing right now. Um, this is, again, for a little bit extra XP here, but then also it'll unlock a quest that'll give up an upgraded sniper rifle for this early game. So taking care of this now, and then Decep is going to move on to start babysitting Claptrap again throughout the early game. Also going to be duping a lot of weapons for a lot of crit damage because there are going to be a couple bosses coming up soon that we're going to want the crit damage for. Yeah, so my job babysitting Claptrap is actually over. I had to hit one trigger. I did my job. Uh, and I'll actually be running ahead at this point. So Southern Shelf normally is a map that's split into two parts. And the second half of this map is blocked off until you kill the first boss. However, waiting for that is slow. So instead, I'm going to go for an out of bounds right here to put myself on the second half of the, of the map early. Shield is not very good, so we'll see how this goes. Hey, Faith. So Unjust is taking over now the story part of it while Decept tries to get out of bounds. Um, it's two easy grenade jumps. Um, just a matter of trying to not get killed by the enemies uh, is a really difficult part right now. So Undust can, now that he finished the first mm -hmm. fight, he can sort of come back and try and assist. Here we are. So one more grenade jump, and they'll land on there this we go. iceberg. This do wall doesn't exist, thankfully enough. Although at this point, I am stuck out of bounds. So the only way to get back in bounds is through a death warp. And thankfully, there is a save station on the other side of this wall right here that I can hit from out of bounds. And then I can use the frozen water right here to down myself and then spawn at the save station. So while Decep is doing this and setting this up, uh, Unjust is doing the wave fight for the story. Uh, and he has one more, a couple of more enemies to kill. And once he kills these two enemies that drop down, he's actually going to be doing a little grenade jump to get into the arena early. Um, you'd think that the Offos with all the crit damage would, would take the first, uh, the next boss, but actually it's going to be the host character that's going to kill this next boss. Um, and that's because uh, Unjust has a slightly modified version of the glitch that Decept's doing with the, the duping. He can do weapon merging. So we basically trick the game into thinking that we're holding both of our inventory slots at the same time. So Decept gets, uh, Unjust gets a slight Critical, critical hit bonus, and these are early enough enemies and early enough bosses that he can actually kill it probably faster than the host character, off host character. So there's the first enemy. I am out of ammo. Oop. This is awkward. That'll be fine. So with that level up, he also gets a level up bonus. Every time you level up, you get double damage for about 30 seconds. So even without a sniper, uh, I just can still kill the boss really, really quickly. 
uh, with the merging and the, the critical hit damage. So that's another boss uh, killed by the host this time instead of the off host. And then while Unjust is doing all of that, Decep is now later on after the gate and has done a lot of the running already, running into a bit of issues with, with some enemies. Um, but he's getting to the part where now that the gate's destroyed, Clapjack gets launched all the way over here, and Decep is already at the next trigger, just about. Um, yeah. So, so it cuts out about a minute of just running over here. Yeah. So here's Claptrap. Um, I did all the running earlier, like ZZ said. So instead of running from where Unjust is to where I am right now, I did a little bit early. So Decep is handing off, taking the, the story this time, maybe sending Claptrap some more. Unjust is doing the other, one of the other side missions that we do here, collecting some Bullymong fur, which is going to give them the, the upgraded, uh, upgraded sniper rifle. So uh, while they're doing that, we have a time for three or four more donations. Oh, wow. Excellent. Well, we have a lot of love coming in here for this Borderlands 2 co-op run, starting off with a community donation with $100 from Bloodshot9001. And they say, so glad to see you guys on stage running one of my favorite games and to get a chance to hang out with, hang out again at GDQ with you guys. Cool people like you are what make the speedrun community so awesome. Don't forget to blow ev up everything up. <laughs> Thanks, Bloodshot. We also have $250 from TFC. TFC. <laughs> and they say... Good luck, Deceptics and Unjust. 104 is cheering you on from the back couch. Thanks, FC. Love you, FC. <laughs> uh, time for one more. OK, great. Well, we have $10 from Anonymous that says, let's get some more Resident Evil. This game was so good. Best remake ever. And indeed, we are almost a quarter way of unlocking that bonus game, but we still have so much to close. We have to get to that $160,000 mark. Let's go, Twitch chat. All right, so next boss is coming up. A lot of bosses in the early game, um, but with all this crit damage, we actually don't want to kill this boss early uh, or too quickly. That there's a little bit of a mani manipulation you can do to uh, activate a trigger a little early, and that requires not killing the boss immediately. So while Decep's been duping a lot of, of crit damage, he's trying not to overdo it so that he doesn't one-shot the boss. So uh, it's going to use an enemy to hit Claptrap's trigger. There's a wave fight afterwards that if we do it right, then it'll skip the wave fight, so we'll see if it ends up working. Sometimes the game doesn't like to cooperate with us, so we'll, we'll see if we can get it. Yeah, it's mostly dependent on the movement patterns of the psychos, and if they decide to not like you today, then it just doesn't work. It happens. So this is Captain Flint, and he has a crit spot underneath his mask right there uh, that we're just going to shove our sniper rifle underneath the mask to get a crit damage. And then he's going to play some Minecraft a little bit. And we're going to get a kill. And wait for Claptrap line. Maybe. Nah, unfortunate. No. Oh, wow. Well. OK. So this up's going to have to do the wave fight afterwards. Uh, getting the manipulation, it, it's kind of random sometimes with the Psycho's patterns. Um, it'll save about 40 seconds or so. But uh, even without that, it'll, the wave fight doesn't take that much longer. And while this up's doing the fight, I'm back in Lyersburg turning in the mission. And I'll pick up some echoes for a dialogue skip. Yep. So once the wave fight is done, uh, Decep's now going to set up the quintessential Borderlands co-op speed glitch. Uh, he's going to spec into a skill called Expertise, which gives you extra move speed while you aim down the sight of the weapon. Problem is the game doesn't track this very well for the off-host character. This is the reason that the off-host character is now Axton. So every time he scopes into the, the gun and drops it, the game doesn't notice that you have dropped your weapon, so it still keeps that speed that you were added. So you can see it a little bit now. He hasn't stacked it a lot, but he's already moving a little bit faster than he's supposed to be. And it's just going to get faster and faster. Faster and faster as faster. the game goes. <laughs> so turn in the story mission. And they're going to make a quick detour. We mentioned how XP route is very tight in the early game. Uh, they need to hit level 8 at a very specific time. So they're actually going to travel back into Southern Shelf. Uh, you're going to spawn really close to Boom Boom, the uh, first boss you killed in this area. Uh, and they give a, a good amount of XP and are really quick to, to kill for the amount of XP they give. So Unjust is going to do the first uh, extra kill. They're going to kill him twice. Um, Unjust will do it first while Decept stacks this expertise gl glitch a bunch. And then once they finish here, they're going to swap and Decept's now going to kill with all the speed that he stacked up. 
go. So that's the first kill. Then we can travel back in afterwards, and you're going to sort of see the effects of stacking this expertise glitch as much as Decep has so far. So moving a little faster than you might expect me to. <laughs> Just a tad bit. Uh, it is my turn to take care of Boom Boom with the crit damage I have. It goes a lot faster. Hello, Psycho. He was definitely on a cannon there. So now that we have all the speed with Axton, now a lot of the routing turns into how do we get the gauge to go as fast as the Axton? We can't. So we try to do as best as possible to get the gauge to where the gauge needs to go. Um, this first time that we're going to do it, uh, Decep's going to hit a save station right next to where gauge needs to be, and gauge is going to death warp. And then Decep is going to, there's a big invisible wall that Decep's just going to go around with all the speed that he has. <laughs> And he's going to go to the other end of the map so that they can hand off the mission back and forth. Yeah, pretty much like Southern Shelf, this area is split in two parts. Invisible wall goes away once you hit a certain objective, but after that objective, you have a very, really long driving section. So, you know, I'm already here. Shocker. <laughs> uh, and then I will be spawning a car for unjust as Hellport 2 because that is the fastest way to get him over here. So you'll see that throughout the course of the run. How do we get the gauge to be where the gauge needs to be? And there are a couple ways that we do it. So, so this episode is going to finish the backtrack to where he ran from and just finish the story while Unjust travels, uh, teleports to the, to the gate to finish the, the quest after, after Decept finishes. So I think we have time for one quick donation. Great, sounds good. Well, like fifty dollars from Clearly Legal that says donating in honor of my mother-in-law who has beat breast cancer twice and whose favorite games are Doom and Animal Crossing. And that being said, chat, we have a fun poll going on on Games Done Quick Twitter. So if you go there, we are we are voting on which is the scariest horrifying monster. And yep, well, Pikmin is there, I believe. <laughs> All right. So we just made it to Sanctuary, which is going to be the main hub of, of the game. Uh, there's going to be a lot of NPCs to meet, so they all have intro cutscenes of let's meet the, the NPCs that you're going to deal with. Um, so what they're going to try and do is stack these cutscenes at the same time so that they only have to watch one, but it counts like they, they watch both of them. So they're going to set this up now. Three, two, one. Go. Nice. Nice. So basically what we're doing there is I was jumping into my cutscene trigger at the same time Deceptics ran into his. So basically we hit both at the same time. So two play, but we only have to watch one. And this cutscene skip also works into another dialogue skip right afterwards. So I'm going to be picking up Marcus's side quest and the echo right next to him. And this echo should, I repeat, should skip the rest of the dialogue in this map. Uh, it could be quite finicky. Sometimes it will work, sometimes it won't. So we're just going to hope it does. Yeah, so if, if the dialogue skip cooperates with us, then it's just go here, do this, go here, do this. Um, this app's going to finish one of the side quests just for a little bit of extra XP um, so that they can hit level 8 at the right time and just meet the rest of the, the people in, in Sanctuary. So I think time, one really quick donation. Uh, okay, sure. Well, we have $25 from Orbitfall that says, it's early in Australia, but there was no way I was missing the Borderlands 2 run. I think I need to dupe this coffee a few times. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so right there, I was actually able to enter a menu while traveling. And if you've played this game co-op before, you know that that's not supposed to be possible. But the game only checks if you're in a menu, during the audible tick noise of each travel tick. So if you enter and exit a menu in between those ticks, then you can do all sorts of menuing. So Frostburn Canyon is a really fun accident movement section where you just have to run as fast as possible throughout this map. Uh, this app's going to take a quick detour. Um, this is the reason that they need to be level 8. There is a SMG just in a puddle. Uh, Every, there, every time you load in the, the game, it's level 8 at this point in the story. Um, and it's one of the best SMGs in the game, uh, just sitting in the puddle. 
Uh, so this is gonna their weapons are falling off a little bit. So this will sort of patch their their DPS for the next ten minutes or so until they get to, to level ten where they get a really big DPS upgrade. So Decept's running through the area and he's gonna hit a save and Unjust is gonna death warp over so that he can be over here for the story part. And uh, during this cutscene, I just rebound my interact key to be mouse wheeled down. This is to achieve something we call scroll skipping or scroll strats. Uh, basically, in very few instances in the game, if you talk to a character twice on the same game tick, you can skip their dialogue. Uh, it's not the most applicable thing. It's, there's like a handful of places where we can actually use it, but it's still very useful. Yep. And then right after the cutscene ended, Decep swapped to a quest. Um, so every side quest in the game has a little intro dialogue where it introduces, this is what I want you to do. Um, this dialogue has really high priority. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a gun. <laughs> it's a gun. Um, anyway, the, the starting quest has really high priority. Um, and if you pick up a quest underneath other really high priority dialogue, then it will save that intro dialogue in your backpack until you swap to it in your quest log. And this intro dialogue can skip other dialogue. So as soon as the cutscene ended, the step swapped to a quest that we had dialogue saved for, and it skipped a little dialogue afterwards. This is the main form of dialogue skipping that they're going to do throughout the run, and this saves minutes upon minutes just not having to listen to dialogue. So really, really big time save just by playing. <laughs> <laughs> that helps. Nice XP win. So what's going on right now, the set is running through the area and just fighting any other enemies that you can find. Um, they need to hit level 10 at a very specific point, so getting as much XP as possible is really imperative. That loot goon is what we call an XP balloon because it gives a lot of XP. Um, so he's looking for enemies like that. Um, there are a couple of guaranteed badasses that are going to spawn, which have increased health, but they give increased XP. Um, so it's worth uh, backtracking to kill those badasses. Meanwhile, Unjust is just doing the story fight, um, killing the, the enemies around. This is a little <laughs> awkward. All right, we're good. Thank you, Lil. <laughs> Thank you, Lil. <laughs> Yeah, she likes to steal your second wins here. Yeah, and then there are a couple chests that Decep's checking while he's running back. If they can find weapons that they need, great. Otherwise, it's not really relied on. So I think you're one or two enemies before badasses. Uh, yeah, I'm on badasses now. All right. So once he gets a specific point, Decep's going to run back to the start of the area so that they can travel out uh, as soon as Unjust finishes the quest. And you may have noticed I've been opening my backpack a lot throughout this area. Um, if you swap, or like how all the guns on the wor on ground and world have a uh, full magazine, guns in your backpack do as well. So I'll just swap to my uh, you, can go. Uh, you can swap to my other gun in my backpack to skip the reload animation. So we did another scroll and that skips a little dialogue after the quest, and they're able to turn it in right away. We're in try. Southern Self again? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're actually where we need to be. Uh, at this point in the story, we're attempting to meet the second out of four of the Vault Hunters from Borderlands 1, uh, and he's being held by the Bloodshots. And so in order to get into Bloodshot Stronghold, we need to obtain a technical that looks like theirs. Uh, so we need to take a little detour to the dust to meet another NPC that will help us do that. Uh, and the dust also contains a very important weapon that we need to collect. It spawns 100% of the time, just like the Lasso, except it spawns in one of five different locations. And so we'll be spending time throughout this map looking at those locations, trying to find where it is. And this gun is important because it has a different type of crit than the snipers I've been duping. So instead of like just adding 160, 160, 160, it'll multiply all of the damage that I've been stacking by uh, like 0.2. And that's way better than uh, just duping normal snipers. So I'll be weaving those in between duping the Jacob snipers. So the, we did some, some of the math uh, a while ago that the most effective way of doing it is duping equal parts of your sniper. And, and the, it's called the Gwen's head pistol. So uh, he'll be duping that, both of those throughout the rest of the game. So, pulling the old tro Trojan horse strategies to, to get into the 
get into the stronghold, so they're just going to kill a bunch of cars. Um, the Sep runs faster than the cars, so he's just going to be on foot <laughs> and kill the cars. Uh, Undust needs a little bit of help from a car to, to kill them. Oh, nice badass. Yep. Oh, I have no second wins as well. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Just annoying. Yeah, and while Decept gets the last few car parts, I'm going to spawn a second car and put that back at the start of the map so Decept can teleport to this once we're done. So we can leave the map just a little bit quicker. Yeah, running is really fast, but teleporting across the map is even faster. <laughs> All right, so nice. here is the Gwen's head. Found that. That's good. Uh, getting it in the last two spawns is slower. The last spawn being the slowest, so good thing we got it there. That's my favorite spot, though. It's the one where I do something. <laughs> <laughs> so they have all the car parts now. Uh, this step is going to travel, teleport back to the start. And I'm just here to, to build the, the Trojan horse car. So this step is going to travel back in. And since I'm just has the car, he's going to go and, and hit the trigger to force his way in. And then uh, Decep is now going to dupe the snipers that he has to just one dupe of this is going to do a, a ton for his crit damage. Um, just multiplying everything that he has, but he's had before is, is really good. So, uh, boss coming up here, which is going to be same as all the other ones with all the crit damage he has. So, during this cutscene where we meet the boss fight we're about to kill, uh, I rebound to interact to the scroll wheel. And I just explained this earlier, how it can skip dialogue. But in this certain instance, we can use it for something a little different, which you'll see. So, boss right here. Boss is dead. <laughs> and he's going to pick up a key and just turn the wheel to open the gate. Just spin it faster. <laughs> yes. yeah, usually that's like a 10 or 15 second animation for it to come down, but we just... Scroll it faster. <laughs> and open it. Just spin the wheel faster, man. Uh, so at this point, these guys need to be level 10 right here, uh, which is a, a really, it's the big milestone for the, for the run, if Utsu, you want to explain why it's so important. Yeah, so you've probably been wondering why they need to be level 10 this whole time, what the specific part is. Uh, so at level 10 in Borderlands 2, uh, it starts to spawn rocket launchers, and they need a specific kind of rocket launcher made by the manufacturer Vladov. Uh, Vladov has a unique effect where every third shot of the gun uh, doesn't cost ammo. And you can actually stack that effect by swapping away and back to the launcher and add that effect onto every weapon you could ever carry. Uh, so they're going to be transferring that effect uh, onto themselves and then grabbing a shotgun made by Jacobs, which one has a low mag and two fires as fast as you can pull the trigger. Uh, they just got the launcher first try, and they already have a gun, so... We have, to be, we have to prepare in case we never get this, because we can never get it, and then we get it first try on stage. <laughs> so, uh, step is going to now dupe these weapons so that both of them can have them, uh, and then he's going to immediately uh, go and continue the story, because we have to continue the story at this point. Um, this area is really unique in that there's a trigger at the start and a trigger at the end. So all you have to do is hit the trigger at the start and then just go out of bounds to get to the end because that's going to be faster than going all throughout. So uh, Unjust is going to go out of bounds right here. Nice, he's out set. of bounds. This app, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's going to go out of bounds and he's going to go for uh, one of the uh, difficult out of bounds. If he doesn't get it, then we have a backup. Um, but pay attention to his screen. And if he gets it, I want to hear everyone behind me pop off because this is really difficult. Oh, nice. nice. Yes. Yeah. Woo. That is very, very difficult, especially off host, especially whenever you're used to latency from playing not in the same room as your partner. Yeah, so grenade timings are actually not client side, they're host side. So your visual timing of grenades is never correct, at least on my screen. So that feels nice to hit that. Yeah. <laughs> And so. uh, one thing I'm doing now is, uh, since we have infinite ammo, uh, the gun we have is a Jacobs manufactured gun, which the gimmick behind Jacobs is that they fire as fast as you can pull the trigger. So I now have infinite ammo. So what I'm going to do is rebind my shoot key to be mouse wheel down, so I can just scroll my scroll wheel on my hyper scroll wheel mouse, and I have a machine gun shotgun now. <laughs> <laughs> with aimbot, correct? Yes, yeah. with aimbot. So I. One of the reasons I'm playing Gage, the character that I currently am, is uh, she has a skill called Close Enough. And uh, basically, at 5 out of 5, uh, expecting that skill, you will have 
Oh, any bullets you shoot that hit a surface instead of an enemy will have a 50% chance to ricochet towards an enemy, dealing reduced damage. So I can just kind of shoot to the floor and everything falls over. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, right after that is another really tight axe and movement section. It's a lot of tight corridors, uh, a lot of turns, and at the end is the boss that that Tissap's going to have to kill right afterwards. Um, so he's going through, and then there's a a way fight right after killing the boss that it's faster just to travel out and not fight the way fight. Um, it's not that we can't kill fast enough. We can kill plenty fast enough, um, but the, the enemies just don't spawn fast enough uh, for it to be worth it. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> boss, by the way. Yeah, so I just did the run through. Now I get to do it again. And then Unjust gets to uh, pay the toll that we definitely had to pay to get into this area. You gotta pay the toll. Gotta pay the toll. It's five dollars, so uh, maybe start a five dollar uh, hype train for the toll. Everyone needs to pay the toll. Okay, it is required. Yeah, chat. Make sure to put that towards the Resident Evil Four remake as the bonus game because we are at thirty-five thousand of one hundred sixty thousand dollars that we need to hit. So let's do it, Twitch chat. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so we're back in Sanctuary. We're gonna turn in the quest that we just did with Roland. Uh, and then pick up another, a couple more side quests, too, that we'll use a little bit later in the area to, to skip some dialogue. Yeah. So making our way to Tundra Express. At the start of this map, you normally have to sit through a 15 to 20 second long cutscene, introducing you to the third out of four characters returning from Borderlands 1. However, cutscenes are slow, believe it or not. So we're going to try and skip that. Uh, if we start or trigger the objective to start the cutscene and then leave the map, then hopefully we can skip it. Nice. 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 Well done. At the start of this map, I'm going to be doing a death warp to a save station to supple hit. And uh, something kind of funny happens here. So I'll bleed out, and uh, my home planet needs me. <laughs> yeah, the collision there is just really weird for whatever reason. Yeah, so they're going to sort of divide and conquer this area. Um, nice. Cool. So right there, I was able to talk to Tiny Tina before her cutscene, because she exists in world, and the objective's already there. And what this does is it plays the dialogue early, and so the dialogue that's currently happening in the cutscene skips it, so she goes directly to her next objective. And from here, I'm actually going to kill a very specific bandit in this bandit camp, because he drops an echo, which I can pick up for a dialogue skip. So that allows Unjust to grab the Badonkadunks right away, and then through the power of shared pockets, I will be giving them to Tina. Would you like to hear a relevant donation? Yes. Yeah. We have $10 from Tiny Tina that says, <laughs> Borderlands 2 is my sister's favorite game. Remember, no oatmeal raisin cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this is the part where they're, they're split up doing different things. Um, we just have to wait for, for animations for the Bonanctons to be, to be built. So Unjust is going to go back and actually do the side quest that Decept picked up. Uh, it's going to be the only other side quest we do in the game, but it gives a guaranteed purple shotgun with a chance of it being a Jacob shotgun that will be a big upgrade or not based on what they have already. <laughs> I don't um, have another gun. You're not purple? You can't see that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this also, if they didn't get first try RNG, it would also be a chance for Decept to catch up on his crit stacks, because if they didn't get it first try, they'd have to save quit. And these glitches go away once you save quit. So uh, this is a good spot for Decept just to sit here and dupe and catch up on his damage. So waiting on animations here. And the side quest is just go here and kill a bunch of enemies that Unjust is doing right now. Time for a donation. Yep, one quick one. Yeah, we have $100 from Jeffy Bug that says, Awesome to see both Borderlands and Risk of Rain represented in this year's schedule. Good luck to Septix and Unjust and Skaz on the runs. Get that $5 toll dono train going. So yeah, chat, why don't we say when we hit the 45-minute mark in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, let's start that $5 donation train to be able to unlock that Resident Evil 4 remake. Let's go, chat. All right, so more action movement to get to the end of the map and kill another boss right afterwards. Um, so the, here's where Decept gets to see whether he got a... No, no unfortunately. Oh, well. Oh, well, you don't need it to, to finish the run, but it definitely helps having a, a lot more damage. So this is the boss. Um, bye. <laughs> 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 so 
So he dropped a power core, which is going to recharge Sanctuary's shields, supposedly. I lost it. That's right there. There it is. Um, so they have to go back to Sanctuary, uh, but the quest kind of breaks if you go to Sanctuary, plus you need to go to Sanctuary Gate. Uh, so instead, they're going to go to Three Horns Divide and just run to Sanctuary. It's also an all-players trigger, so both characters need to be there. So it's just the easiest way of getting both characters here. And at the start of this map, uh, we're going to be using those echoes that the sec was getting in the first map of the game. We're going to play them in a very specific order. Uh, and what this will do is basically transfer the high priority of a quest onto the echo log that we have. Uh, so normally in this area, there's like a bunch of people going back and forth. There's like, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Can you not play yours? Nope. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't get the dialogue <laughs> skip. <laughs> the echo says Put no. <laughs> That's fine. We have a backup dialogue skip. No worries. Yeah, so normally we'd play the echoes here, but game said no. So. Game said no. So instead, what they're going to use is it looks like tutorial dialogue. So uh, Claptrap is going to tell you how to use these quick change stations. And for whatever reason, Claptrap has the highest priority dialogue in the game. <laughs> so he's just going to skip everything underneath it while the tutorial dialogue's playing. So that'll skip all the dialogue that's happening in here. Um, it's a, it's using it from somewhere else that we're using it, but the, they have a backup, so we'll be fine. So um, typically, if that would happen, then all of this would be happening underneath that echo dialogue, that everything would be skipped. And normally here, you get locked out of the fast travel network uh, during this part of the run. But uh, if you enter the fast travel menu before it gets locked out, you can keep it open. So we're gonna time a travel out here at the end of the map, and this will skip a, like a two-minute-long in-game cutscene that you would otherwise have to watch. It's actually one of the first. Skips found in this game, I think. I've never used this much. Might want to hang on to yeah. uh, And now. And now. And now. <laughs> so they just skipped a big in-world cutscene that happens. It's about two minutes or so, um, just by traveling out and not paying attention to it. So they traveled to Bloodshot Stronghold just because that's going to be the closest to where they go next. I'm pretty sure the original version of that skip was found at a GDQ. I think so. I don't know the, the backstory behind it, but... Don't, don't know the lore. <laughs> I'm sure Twitch chat will correct us. So, uh, now we have a couple more animations to wait for. Um, but Unjust is about to hit level 12. I need to help you out there, I guess. So level 12 is the next important benchmark for Gage. But they're a little behind on XP, which is fine. Um, but now they're level 12. So yeah, now I'm level 12, which gives me access to a skill called Buck Up. Uh, and what Buck Up is, is when Gage's action skill Death Trap is active and your shield is below full, Death Trap will attempt to buck you up. And what this means is uh, they'll shoot like a blue beam at you. I got the turret on the lamp. Uh, they'll shoot a blue beam at you, and this blue beam recharges your shield. Um, but if you exit a map while that blue beam is active, the game never removes it. So right now the game thinks my shield is constantly being uh, recharged by Death Trap, and this effect is stackable and can also be transferred to other characters. So this will be our main form of survivability throughout the, the rest of the game. They're also checking the vendors here for shields. They're looking specifically for an amp shield. Uh, they start, start spawning in the world at level 15, and this is where the vendors start hitting level 15. It'll be important a little bit later um, because they're not 15 yet, um, so we'll explain why whenever, whenever it becomes relevant. Did you get an amp? No. no. Uh, unfortunate. So uh, this area is one big dialogue skip at the start that skips everything in the map and just that runs to the end and finishes. So we have time for one or two quick donations. All right, sounds good. Well, we have $5 from Dr. Z that says, even Dr. Z has to pay the toll. Try not to die. And that being said, chat, we just have about two minutes before that donation train is going to take off from the station. So make sure to get those donations in and put it towards Resident Evil 4 Remake. All right. So where we are at the story right now, a little teleported Sanctuary away from Jack's attack. And now we can't get back to Sanctuary. Uh, Sanctuary is off the fast travel network, so we can't get back. It's one of the interesting gameplay mechanic where you're locked out of the hub world. So what they're trying to do is get a new fast travel station that has the new location of Sanctuary programmed into it. So they came to this remote area of Overlook. Um, this is, you place the beacon down, and it's an eight-minute-long wave fight um, that you can lose time for no reason. You can gain time for no reason. It, it's 
wildly inconsistent. Uh, but a trick that was found is the beacon that you're placing down has a bit of a failsafe in it. If it breaks seven times, then the game sort of takes pity on you and says, hey, don't worry about protecting the beacon. Just kill the enemies and survive and don't die. So what they're going to do is uh, break it seven times. It, the beacon's going to turn invincible. And then if you save quit while the beacon's invincible, it completes the quest. So this turns this eight-minute long wave fight into about three minutes of just breaking the beacon. Um, there's a bunch of ways that you can break the beacon. Uh, in this category, the fastest way is just enter the Holy Spirits and travel out of the area, and the beacon breaks. So what they're going to be doing is traveling back and forth a whole bunch and breaking the beacon, repairing the beacon. Um, this also gives a chance for, I just mentioned that buck up can be transferred to other characters. This is one of the few times where both characters are at the travel at the same time. So this is a chance for Decept to get some of his buck up so that he has some survivability throughout the run. So uh, it turned a really annoying wave fight that no one really knows how it works into a, an extremely consistent three minutes of, of just downtime. So we have a good amount of time for some donations. All right, sounds good. Well, we have $25 from Charlie that says, donating for, uh, for the boss strats I wish I had when I first played this game last year. Had to clock out of work and give this run my full attention. We also have $20 from Caribbee that says, more GDQ means more money for charity. So let's extend our run and get that Resident Evil incentive met. And indeed, we're one minute away from that $5 donation train starting. Let's go, Twitch chat. Woo! We also have $50 from VAD that says, here's a $5 donation. Hmm, looks like I added an extra zero. Oh well, keep up the awesome runs. Thanks, VAD. And $20 from CC that says, Borderlands 2 is one of my favorite games ever, and I've played it many, many times with my so. Currently sitting on the couch beside me with our cat in his lap. Now go punch Handsome Jack. Go, go. All right, so the objective just updated. We have the check mark. We defended the beacon from the attack. We did a really did good it. job. We did you a really did good it. job. Good job. I'm proud of you both. Really that looked really hard. Yeah. So we have the fast travel station. We're able to travel back to Sanctuary. They're going to sort of sort their inventory out a little bit uh, since they have a little bit of time before the fast travel actually activates. And then head back to Sanctuary. We defended Overlook. Got it all. <laughs> that was a lot of loot. So we finally made it back to Sanctuary. And at this point in the game, you've been a couple places since the last time you've been here. So there's a lot of side missions on the map. And we'll be kind of just collecting a lot of them to use for dialogue skips. I'll be dead so I'm very sorry to go. And we still don't know where he's got the vault keys. I can help you. Nice. So, and then directly after that, we are making our way to Wildlife Exploitation Preserve, which has probably seen the most changes in recent years, going from kind of a fast, casual thing to a we're doing both, we're doing two things at once, kind of split up across the map. Um, and neither way is intended, really. Yep. <laughs> not, none of the ways are really intended. So they're going to start off with a quick dialogue, skip to skip initial dialogue. And then uh, they're going to do some, some taxing strats. So typically, you can't jump on another player's head. Uh, if you try to, you jump off. But if you down yourself, then you're able to, to sit on another character. So <laughs> Unjust is going to down himself and be taxied by Axton. Unjust finally gets to go Axton super speed. <laughs> um, so this area is sort of split in half by a massive invisible wall that's blocked by a big wave fight. And again, uh, killing the enemies doesn't take very long. It's just spawning the enemies takes very long. So we're just not going to do the wave fight. Um, so Decep is going to do a lot of the uh, objectives on the first half of the, the wave fight. And then Unjust is going to be doing a little out of bounds section. He's going to do his own double nade jump that Decep did. Very nice, very nice. And then he's going to hit a save station on the other side of a wall which is on the other side of the wave fight. So uh, this isn't really where you're supposed to be for this area. But going over here, we activated the save station. So once Decept finishes, he finished all the triggers over here. So he's going to death warp, and he's now on the other side of the wave fight. We've completed all the objectives on the one side, and Unjust is going to do the same after that. And now there's a couple of objectives that still need to be done on the other side of the wave fight. So Decep is now going to do his own out-of-bounds as well. And he's going to backtrack a decent amount to 
the next, next objective, which is going to trigger the boss fight. Um, this is all walkable terrain. <laughs> um, somehow. <laughs> somehow. Uh, so That's where the wave fight would normally be. Yep. We're behind the wall. So I'm he's going to get back in bounds. Yeah. So the wall, the, the ceiling exists. So he jumps down, he's back in bounds, he's able to pick up the objective. Meanwhile, Unjust did his own out of bounds uh, to get into the boss arena. 30 FPS. <laughs> Thank you. Got into the boss area, just picked up the feather, and Unjust is already in the arena to trigger the fight. So that was a really, really good wildlife right there. So Unjust had to do his out of bounds because the elevator that takes you into the arena is an all players trigger. So either we wait for Decept to come to the other side of the map, or we just go out of bounds and hit the objective early. <laughs> so there's a, a big animation of waiting for Bloodwing to, to fly around that it gives Decept time to kill a couple of badasses for some, some XP and then make his way over to the arena as well. Yeah, so there's, uh, this map actually has abnormally tall invisible walls. And so you might think, well, they, I mean, that might be weird because we just went out of bounds like four times in a row. Um, we use all but one gap that they've left for us, uh, including this one. There's a wall here, just FYI. Uh, they just didn't put it low enough. <laughs> so we can move through this wall, and then I can make my way back in bounds to get to the travel. So we can leave as soon as Unjust is done. So uh, Unjust has enough damage right now, and Bloodwing's hitbox is high enough, uh, big enough that he's able to do a lot of damage to, to Bloodwing, and he can handle the fight on his own. We have to wait for animations anyway, um, so it's perfect for the gauge to, to get the damage over here, while Axton can use his speed to get back to the fast travel to travel back out. So a quick dialogue skip. And very nice. good. That was a really good wildlife. <laughs> so, Bloodwing's okay there. Um, this is where we typically use the tutorial dialogue, but with the, the mishap with the echo just breaking, uh, <laughs> they'll be fine and figure out a, a backup for it instead. So. Time for a dono? Uh, yeah, one quick donation. Okay, this is amazing. The donation train is working. We are just $2,000 away from hitting 40000 out of 160000 for that Resident Evil 4. But we have $5 from Big Law that says, Greetings from the back couch. Gotta pay my fair fare for this killer run. Good luck, decap and unjust. <laughs> oh, you're in a <laughs> menu. I'm allergic to the travel, apparently. <laughs> So this next area is going to be meeting the last Borderlands 1 Vault Hunter. So uh, we're going to recruit Brick. Um, and it's another Decep run through the map, and then Unjust is going to Death Warp. It's going to be a really long wave fight of uh, killing Brick's minions and recruiting him. So we have time for a, a couple more donations after this now. Oh, excellent. Well, we have so many $5 donations and $5 from Sodatsu that says, all aboard, choo-choo. $25 from Middleman34 that says, let's get that Resident Evil 4 incentive. $50 from Tai Chi 37 10 tickets for the $5 chain. Love Borderlands, love Risk of Rain, would love to see that RE4. Thank you so much for all these donations. This is all going to PCF. What an amazing cause. Yeah, keep going with them. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, we have so many. Five dollars from Mad Moxie. Hey, sugar, looks like it's my turn to tip you. <laughs> Preventing cancer is a pretty good cause, Vault Hunter. Fifty dollars from Snipasaur that says, couldn't think of a better time than during Borderlands 2 shenanigans to donate. Thank you so much, Snipasaur. So I think, is this the last wave? Yes. Last wave, okay. One more? Yeah, one, one quick one. Cool. $25 from Swinlaw that says, so proud of how far you guys have come with these runs. Let's make the Borderlands community proud. <laughs> All right, so directly before this cutscene, Unjust played uh, a quest for Line of Dialogue. And then after, at this point, we're going to play a very specific quest here. Now, normally, the quest routing isn't too specific. It's just only when quests you know, unlock and you can have them. This one in particular has a super high, line, high priority line of dialogue that allows us to you know, skip all the dialogue here. So normally, we'd be sitting waiting for like 40 seconds of brick at the door. But instead, it'll just open it right away. 
There's like four lines that happen throughout this that you need four different quests to swap to to skip the dialogue that just that one quest handles it all, which is was found by accident, actually. Um, so some of the best strats found accidentally. So over here, they're going to escort Brick back to the fast travel. It's a lot of wave fights. Um, the really important one is the, the way to speed this area up is just optimizing Brick's routing. So we can kill the enemies as fast as we really want. It's just a matter of making sure Brick is in the location he needs to be to move to the next area. So they might keep a couple of enemies alive for the time being just so that Brick stays in the right spot that he needs to be. Uh, otherwise, in between these different waves, the Zep's going to be uh, duping for damage. And Andres is going to be checking a handful of chests, just to see if they can get some upgrade for the end game. So I think we have some time for a few more donations. Great, sounds good. Well, there's still so much love for this Borderlands 2 run coming in. $50 from Brother Nun that says, let's get some donations that shoot donations that explode into more donations. <laughs> And going off of that $20 from Mr. Torque that says, <laughs> Hey, GDQ, explosions? Explosions. Explosions. <laughs> we also have $15 from Anila that says, I will destroy Handsome Jack with my bare hands. I will... Stairs? No! No! And then $50 from Octail Fractal that says, I am the shiniest meat bicycle! <laughs> Can I uh, get your gun real quick? 18 amp, not bad. Yeah, let's just make a couple of those. All right, so last beacon. Uh, Brick's going to destroy the shield, and then two more badasses are going to spawn, and then we recruited Brick. We're all, we're all set. So... It's always amazing to see Decep kick the <laughs> foot mouse and then watch guns spit out. It's my no. favorite part of this. It's been just the fun part of seeing him in person. <laughs> just <laughs> shaking, trying to get a dupe off. <laughs> so we have Brick now. Um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to infiltrate Jack's bunker right now. We have two of the things that we need already, the Claptops upgrade and Brick. Uh, the last thing we need is to uh, imitate Jack. So what we're going to do is head to Opportunity, where we're going to try and get a device that'll uh, make us think that we're Jack's voice. So uh, Opportunity is a, a city area that's really tight corridors um, and really sort of spread out and difficult to navigate. Uh, but with the super speed and with two people, you, we can knock everything out within a minute or two. So the Zip's going to head to a specific area with Jack's body double and steal the body double's pocket watch. Guys, we killed Jack. We did it. Yep. We did Save it. Save Pandora. <laughs> Save Pandora. Uh, so we're going to activate these info kiosks to get recordings of Jack's dialogue, and they're going to play them in a specific way that they skip each other. Um, so we're not going to listen to the full line of dialogue, but the game's going to think that we did. So they're pressing them in a very specific order. There and we go. We listened to them all. We listened to everything. We listened to them. Uh, we're going to use that information to build the pocket watch here. I'm going to play an extra quest here. And then adjust it at the travel to get us out of here. There we go. And that was, that was opportunity. Very, very fast area in co-op. So they have all the, the pieces that they need. Uh, they just need to turn the quest, and they'll be able to attack Jack's bunker. And we can travel out just to, to skip all the dialogue that happens afterwards. It's like a minute and a half of just talking back and forth. So traveling back to, to Overlook just to get a couple of side quests for some dialogue skips later. They have to travel somewhere. Might as well get something out of it. So they're going to pick up Clapjop. He's going to help us get through to Jack's bunker. We definitely need him to get to, get to where we're going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So they have a couple of dialogue skips for to skip Claptrap's dialogue at the in front of the gate. There we go. There. And then Decept's just going to keep duping for damage. Uh, we'll never. There's not going to be a point where we have too much crit damage. Uh, the as we start getting more and more under leveled, the enemies are going to have damage reduction. So we the offos can never have too much crit damage. So shield is down. 
And Decept's going to run through the area, kill a handful of enemies throughout the way, and then he's going to hit a save station for Unjust to, to Death Warp over to, to to help out with the wave fight. So one downside of this setup is uh, Decept's damage is mostly crit damage, and Unjust is usually base damage. They're saved right now because they have a really good shotgun, but at this point it's really helpful to have the gauge here because the gauge is able to kill the turrets much faster because the turrets don't have any crit spots. So, Yeah, we're lucky to have a really good gun here. Which, typical. <laughs> <laughs> typical marathon <laughs> luck. So they clear out the, the enemies over here uh, to clear out the spawns. There's a spawn cap in the game that they've been navigating a little bit. It doesn't come into play as much in, in any percent. Um, <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye, Constructor. <laughs> Constructors have a shield in front of their face, but if just like Flint, if you shove your face in their face, uh, it doesn't work. So, easy kill right there. Make our way to the bunker. All right, so they're at the bunker now. There's a dialogue skip right at the start to skip some dialogue. Um, and then there's going to be 11 turrets that spawn throughout here. Uh, the turrets are guaranteed spawns, but where they spawn and when they spawn is random. Uh, so they're going to spend... They're going to have to react to where each turret spawns so that they can kill it as fast as possible. So while they do that, I think we have time for one or two donations. OK, well, kicking us off, we actually have a really exciting announcement because we are extending the marathon by adding a game to the upcoming checkpoint, which is going to be coming up after Risk of Rain returns because our runners are going so fast. <laughs> it is going to be none other by Aragami, new game no out of bounds run by Amarwin. I am looking forward to it. Ooh. Ooh. Still have time for a dono? Uh, Unjust, are you still uh, yeah, on the one fight? More. Okay, one, one quick donation. Great. $10 from Ivy Carnivora that says, Hello, Trap. Wait for, how are you? Uh, Claptrap EXE has crashed. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so at this point, I'm going to let the set uh, finish off the last of the turrets. And I'm going to be doing a little bit of an out of bounds here. Um, after we're done with all the combat in this area, there's an elevator you have to ride to get to the next area. Uh, but running the elevator is slow, so what I'm going to do is just do an out of bounds and fall to the bottom of the elevator shaft, and then call the elevator to the bottom. I really think I protect Angel with nothing but a couple of bots and some flimsy turrets. <laughs> You're not at the bunker right now. The bunker is the place. It's not a that's place. Not the, that's a, that's not a We're place. not at the bunker? No. The bunker that's is it. a frisbee? That's the bunker. <laughs> <laughs> so, bunker's a boss. Uh, I'm standing in a very specific spot to hopefully get the bunker to give us a decent cycle like that. Nice. There we go. Uh, and this is the most consistent spot to get a consistent cycle. Uh, it, pro it isn't the fastest, but it's guaranteed. I say guaranteed. It's guaranteed. <laughs> right. Guaranteed. Uh, and it just consistency is always key for boss fights like this. Um, bunker is the first boss fight where a little difference. You can't kill a boss right away. Sad. But... Uh, we have to wait for the bunker to go to its death spot and then take it out from there. There's actually a convenient little gap here that I'll be able to shoot the bunker from when, when it's in its death spot, and so it'll put me closer to the next objective. And once the step's done with all that, I'm going to travel, and then during the travel ticks, I'll run back and hit the button on the elevator to make the game think we've actually ridden it all the way down. It, it only checks that you hit the button to take the elevator and that you're at the bottom of the elevator. It doesn't have a way of checking if you actually rode the elevator down. So we use it to our advantage to do all, all of it at the same time. Just like that. Nice. So Control Core Angel. Control Core Angel. So here we're going to travel out just to skip the introduction cutscene when you meet Angel for the first time and travel back in. So the, the face that's been on the screen the entire game uh, it turns out is a siren that is down here. Spoilers. Um, so right now, we just kind of have to defend Angel um, from enemies that are spawning. Um, and it is a five minute or so just auto scroller. We can speed things up a little bit. We can skip some dialogue, kill the enemies as fast as possible, manipulate some of the, the NPCs in the area. But it, there isn't much that we can do to speed it up outside of that. Um, there's famously a, actually Amerlin from the, the Aragami run that's going to come soon has a bounty up right now that if you can skip any of the injectors in here, you can get money. Um, it's been active for, what, eight years now? <laughs> <laughs> a year or two, you know. <laughs> five, six, in amount. Yeah, so 
Um, we've been trying. We haven't found anything. Um, so uh, that gives us good time for a lot of donations. <laughs> okay. There's still so much love coming in. Just kicking us off, we have $25 from Expert Bandit that says, had to donate to my favorite co-op game of all time, Borderlands 2. Heck yeah, Expert Bandit. We also have $10 from RPD234 that says, important reminder to shoot that one guy in the face. Oh, we missed it. We Not the arm. It. We did miss it. Not the knee. Not the upper thigh, but the face. <laughs> Thank you, RPD. <laughs> oh boy, and we're keep, we're still making leeway on that Resident Evil 4 remake separate ways bonus game. Folks, we have to reach $160,000 for that. So make sure when you send in those donations, you put it towards the Resident Evil 4 remake. And we're almost 25% of the way, just $1,128 to go to be able to get to that one quarter mark. I believe in you, Twitch chat. Let's go. So have you guys made it to, is Roland in here yet? Roland's yep, here. Roland's Roland here. is here. So he is. one of the recent ways that we found that we can speed this up, like we said, uh, manipulating some of the, the NPCs, we found that Roland follows the host character wherever the host character goes. So Unjust's primary job over here is going to the locations that, that Roland needs to be and just kind of like leading him in the right direction so that he doesn't spend the time running across the entire arena. Um, that's something that could say lose 30 seconds or so if he was in the wrong spot. Um, the, now that we found that we can lead Roland where he needs to go, it saves a whole bunch of time. So there's a couple areas where he's gonna, uh, where Andres is gonna sort of make sure that he goes where he needs to be. So we can do a few more donations right yep. now. Okay, great. We have fifty dollars from Handsome Jack that says donating to see RE4 remake because that's what heroes do. <laughs> Okay, we also have uh, $20 from Blair. Thank you so much for that donation. Keep, have, keep them coming. All right, great. Well, we have a lot of donations coming in. They're loving this Borderlands 2 action. We have $50 from John that says, just going to leave this here. Got to get that bonus game, right? Yes, indeed. And we are less than $1,000 away from hitting that 25% mark. This is so awesome, Chad. You're doing amazing. And we have $20 from Josh that says, more games to unlock? A dog to save? Let's keep those donations rolling. <laughs> we have $5 from none other than Claptrap themselves that says, Claptrap here, why does my voice sound normal? I'm sorry, Claptrap. A little bit of a modification there. <laughs> $20 from Airplane that says, Borderlands 2 is my most played game, excluding Final Fantasy XI and XIV. Sorry, I'm bad with Roman numerals. I dare anyone to come up with five villains that are more entertaining than Handsome Jack. Good luck. Indeed, Airplane. Clap job. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we're reaching the end. End of con Control Car Angel. I think we have couple more enemies to kill. Three more to go. Three more to go. Um, so, do you guys have the, the echoes for the skip? Or? No. No? Okay. That's fine. Uh, so, a couple more dialogue skips to save some of the... Good to bad. There. So, we did it. Control Guard Angels are <laughs> just about done. Um, it's the point in the run where you get a little break. Uh, get to check, check your phone. Talk with Twitch chat. So, uh, we're all set here. Um, they're gonna do one more dialogue skip, I think, to to skip the last bit of dialogue, and then there's a big cutscene that's gonna happen afterwards. Um, spoilers, so we're just we're not gonna say what happens in the cutscene, um, but a big cutscene that they're just gonna travel out to skip as per co-op usual. So I'm gonna turn in as we leave, and then I'll skip the the cutscene that normally plays. I'm just gonna leave. Angel and Roland over there. They're, yeah, they're, yeah they're, out. they're just chilling. Yeah, they're yeah. getting milkshakes. Yeah, they're getting some milkshakes. Yeah. So the problem with traveling out, though, is now we're kind of stuck down here. Uh, we didn't take the elevator down, so we'd have to take the elevator up. Or one way that we found is that uh, Decept can death warp. Uh, if you don't have a save station active, uh, then it'll just teleport you to the fast travel station. It's not a mechanic known very widely, um, but we use it a couple times. Only time in this run. So Decept on death warps to get out of the elevator. 
and gets to the fast travel to get back to Sanctuary and in Marcus's shop. Right. Yep. So, uh, turn in the quest and get a couple of side quests too for dialogue skips. And they're going to make their way to the last sort of hub world of the game. Um, they're going to go to Iridium Blight. And it's just a quick run through the dust to get to Iridium Blight. Um, so, what happened in the cutscene is Jack knows where the vault key is and he captured the Lilith to charge the vault key. So, we need to save Lilith and find out where the vault key is, where the vault is, so that we can stop Jack from taking over the world. So, to do that, we need to go to the info stockade, um, which is where the information for where the vault is housed. So they're going to run over there, and Hyperion is going to lift the bridge so that we can't go up there and can't make it to the info stockade. Um, so we have to, in typical Borderlands fashion, um, blow up the bridge so that we can get across. Um, so Decept's going to hit the trigger to activate the bridge being raised. There's no other way to cross it. No other way to, no other way to cross it. No it's other way. Impossible. No other way. There's no other way. So hit the trigger, and the bridge is raised. And There's no other way. No other way. No other way. There's no, no other, other way. way. <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately, we can't actually go to Boneyard. Uh, the main quests are actually um, programmed very, very well, and so you can't like skip major portions of the story. So we do need to make our detour to Sawtooth Cauldron to get, get those explosives to blow up the bridge because. There's no other way. There's no other way. <laughs> so there's a couple of triggers here. Uh, right now is the point where we get really, really underleveled. Um, if you notice, this happened on just our level 18, and the enemies are level 27. Um, we have the damage to overcome that, but uh, we don't quite have the shields to overcome it. So the big difficulty with this area is just staying alive. Um, Decep is going to run through the area, kill the, the ambush commanders. Uh, there's an elevator where the explosives are being housed that we need to... to trick the, the guy from coming down. There's a trigger just in the middle of the, the road that Decept's going to hit. Uh, That's not the normal trigger. It's not the normal trigger. For anyone wondering, there's like a one pixel big trigger right there uh, that you can just jump into. So instead of walking a couple steps forward, you can do that instead. Yeah. So they're going to uh, destroy the, the bandit's buzzard, and he's going to take the elevator down to, to uh, avenge his, his buzzard. Can I sneak in a donation? Yeah, one quick one. We have $250 from Shockwave. Hi, Shockwave. Hi, Shock. Hello Hi, from Shock. the back couch. Amazing to see how much this game has broken over the years since it's last been on GDQ. Thanks for keeping the run alive and awesome. P.S. If after the run is over, you shoot the guy in the face, I'll donate another $100. We'll, we'll make sure to do that. We'll have to remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can remind you guys. Perfect. So the elevator came down. Now we're in the place with the explosives. Um, we have to kill some of the buzzards that are defending the explosives. Um, because, again, the only way that we can... Um, Get across the bridge is to blow it up. Only way. Um, no other way. That's going to be a common theme, is we just blow things up to get what we need. Um, <laughs> Lilith got captured, so frickin' Mordecai just kind of lost all sense of tactics. <laughs> so they defeated the buzzards that were protecting the... Oh, one more buzzard. Nope, we're good. We're good. So defeated the buzzards that were protecting the, the explosives, and Brick's going to have his guys come in and, and grab the explosives. So that was a really good sawtooth. Uh, getting through it without any, any deaths is definitely very, very good. So the last buzzard's going to come pick up the explosives. And then from here, we're actually going to take the area transition out of the map instead of fast traveling back to Radium Blight. Whenever you use a fast travel, there's a th three-second long blue tunnel, and we don't want to sit through that. And there's also like doors you have to wait to open if we went from the fast travel. So going from the map itself back into Iridium Blight is much faster, much straighter line, just easier. And uh, as you'll see, uh, the bridge is, ex is exploded now. So I can cross it. We can, we can cross the bridge. Cross. We can cross it now. <laughs> Once again, there was no other way. And then on to Arid Nexus Boneyard, which, keeping the, the theme of Lilith is gone, we have to blow something else up. Um, the, the only way to get to the info stockade is to blow up this pipeline and run through the pipeline to get there. Now, to do this, I'm going to stay above ground and take care of, or overload the pump stations above ground, and I'm just going to go below ground and take care of that one down there. 
And typically in this area, it's like a really confined area with a lot of enemies, so it's like really difficult to you know stay alive, especially considering we're massively underleveled at this point. So what I used to do was just kind of hide and cross my fingers and hope for the best. Uh, but now, instead of uh, hoping I don't die, I'm I'm just gonna down myself and I'll respawn before we need to travel out. So blow up the pipe. We hit the pipe. I promise. Um, that oh. card just has a really big hitbox. Yeah, and we're not going in the pipe. What? It was the only way. There, there was no way. other way. See it? Oh, there's what? another way. No way. <laughs> <laughs> so from there, we can make our way to the Info Stockade for real this time. Uh, this is a really short map. All we have to do is get the information. So I'm just going to go for a little jog and get that done. Unjust gets the greatest job of the run, uh, traveling. <laughs> Yeah. So, so there's a mini boss right there that spawns that we don't need to kill. Uh, we can just run past him, which is really, really good because uh, he doesn't have any crit spots, so he's really difficult to kill. So we just run past him. So uh, just need to wait for this dialogue to skip itself, and then we'll be able to pick up the echo that has the location. And that is the info stockade. <laughs> And now, for the final time, we've made our way to Sanctuary. Uh, one more quest turn in to get the last piece of info, go. And then we need to make our way to the, the warrior. We've finally figured out where the warrior is, and we need, to, we need to get past this door that Claptrap will help open, because there's no other way there's to get around the no door. Other way. No so other Claptrap way. has to help us. So we're going to talk to him and then travel out because Claptrap likes to talk a lot and move slow. So in order to skip those, we just do a little travel out, travel back. And it is actually faster for me to run all the way back there than it is to just wait. Typical Claptrap fashion. Yep. So they're going to run back to the arena. And this is a, another big wave fight of Jack's trying to stop us from entering the area to, to get to the warrior. Uh, that's how we know we're in the right place, because otherwise Jack wouldn't care. Um, so this is just wait for enemies to spawn and kill them as fast as we can. So time for a good amount of donations here. All right, sounds good. Well, kicking us off, we have a $25 from C. Fischl that says, I'd like to take a moment to thank the amazing tech crew running a 156-hour stream, constantly swapping between different hardware and software, balancing audio for hundreds of presenters. That stuff is hard. And they do it four times a year. GDQ wouldn't be nearly as awesome without them. Keep up the fantastic work, guys. Heart. Wow, thank you so much, C. Fischl. We appreciate you. We also have $75 from Petricor that says, I'm a bit late, but I just had to donate whilst one of my favorite speedrun streamers is hosting one of my favorite games. Yo, thank you so much, Petricor. We also have $25 from KD Kit that says, this Borderlands 2 run is stunning. I cannot agree more. It's so hard for me to do my job as host because this gameplay is just so incredible. These runners are amazing. Don't you agree, audience? Yeah. <laughs> These guys have revolutionized the category. It, it was it, this was back in the event seven years ago or so, and the run has even though you're playing the same game with the same glitches, the run looks so so much different because of these guys. So a couple more donations. Yeah, great. Fifty dollars from Exalxer that says donating again for a game my friends and I used to play endlessly. Every enemy is face McShooty <laughs> when you're going fast. <laughs> Also, folks, as an amazing update, we have reached over $40,000 raised towards Resident Evil 4 Remake. And folks, we still have quite a bit to go. We need just under $120,000 left to go, but don't worry, we have a good amount of a ton of amazing speed content between there. But make sure when you send in a donation, you put it towards unlocking that bonus game, Resident Evil 4 Remake, separate ways. So one of the ways that we can actually speed up this wave fight is happening right now. Uh, some sort of repair surveyors will fly in, and these guys are really difficult to kill. They don't have a crit spot, and they're flying around, so they're not near a surface for Unjust to use close enough to kill. So what they do to, to sort of manipulate them is they'll wound some of the loaders on the outside of the arena. Then the repair surveyors will, will come in and start repairing them and sit still so that these guys can kill them. So they're able to get through that wave fight really, really quickly. Um, and 
they're uh, able to, to have Claptrap open the door for them. Yeah, we need Claptrap to open the door because uh, there's no way to get behind the door without him. No other way. No. No other way. Ignore what I'm doing right Just now. Just ignore the out of bounds. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we have $45 from Ivan that says, if only there was another way. <laughs> no other way. No, no there's, there's no other way. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to travel. They're able to get uh, past the door early. So Andres is able to travel right away, right as the door's opening. This app is going to get some quests and skip some dialogue. So here's pass here. We're going to ask for a little quiet here, because this is a really difficult movement. Um, so we'll see. This is fun action movement, but we'll see if this app can, can get this. No. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> uh, so the the enemies in this area are very high level. Um, just one snipe just depletes his shield, and he actually uh, showed off the the difficult part about this. There's just a floating invisible platform in the center of the lava there that they use to to take a direct path to the end. Um, but running through snipers trying to do it is really difficult. So. There we nice. go. There we are. There we go. There nice. we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's always got to be the snipers and the loaders, you know? All right. So we made it to no more enemies. We're All good. Right. Okay. Nice. We did it. Nice job. So we're in the Vault of the Warrior. This is the final boss. Uh, we're... All this talk about Handsome Jack, we finally get to meet Jack one-on-one, -on -one, mano y mano. Because uh, Giuseppe is a lot faster than Andres, so he's going to make it to the arena before Andres can. Actual 1v1. <laughs> <laughs> Actual 1v1. It may be a co-op run, but it is a 1v1. I might have the advantage. Just maybe. Maybe. But Handsome Jack, quintessential villain. We meet him for the first time. We can all say hi to him. Yeah, I know. Hi, Jack. Hi, Jack. Jack. Hi, Jack. <laughs> Bye, Jack. Bye, Jack. Bye, Jack. Bye, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> so we take down Handsome Jack. Uh, he has the vault key charged. So we're going to no! unleash the warrior, unleash the, the vault. I'm not dying yet. <laughs> You're too late, bandit. I win. We didn't go fast enough, apparently. We're too late. We're too late. We're too late. If only there was another way. <laughs> <laughs> so the final boss, the warrior. Uh, again, we are about 13 levels underleveled. So I'm doing about 20-ish. Yeah, just 10% of my actual damage is what is being output. Um, that's the final boss. <laughs> So the warrior, the warrior is similar to how Bunker was, where we deplete the health, but he has to go into his death cycle afterwards. So we have to wait for the animation before we can finish. And there he is. One last bit of health. Trampoline. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> And time will be coming up fairly shortly. One more dialogue skip. And then once Jack is able to be killed, then uh, we'll touch the Vulcan and that'll be, that'll be it. And time. Nice. Well done, dude. <laughs> Good job, guys. Uh, quick reminder to shoot the guy in the face. Yeah. Yes. yes. We will go do that. So, uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone for watching. Thanks for Unjust for being an amazing co-op partner. Thank you for the couch for helping with commentary. The back couch for being here. And just everyone for joining us on an incredible speed run. This is honestly my favorite category. I like, it's just changed so much since we started running. Um, World record has gone down like 10 plus minutes, 13-ish minutes since we started running four years ago. And uh, I'm glad we got to share all of the cool strats with you guys. So you have anything else, Andres? So yeah, just uh, thank you to everyone. Uh, I want to no specifically say thank you to Shockwave, Amarlin, and FC. Those three are like the real big in getting me into this co-op run of this game. 
So huge shout out to those three. And just thank you to GDQ, all the tech, <laughs> everyone running the event. Yeah, to elaborate a little bit more, the, the three of us started running the 100% version of this category. Uh, we were all home from COVID, and their run is just an incredibly fun run that we started running together, and that's what got them into COVID. And to go on. Do it. Shoot them in the face. gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> all right, with that, Couch, you have anything else? No. No. All right, yeah. well, thank you all for watching. Uh, thank you, GDQ, for allowing us to showcase this run. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of AGDQ 2024.